Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena episode 60 for Wednesday, August 26th, 2015. Voice Assistance. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by SmartThings. SmartThings lets you monitor, control, and secure your home from wherever you are using your smartphone. Right now, SmartThings is offering Android App Arena listeners 10% off any featured SmartThings kit and free shipping in the U.S. when you go to smartthings.com slash arena. Use the offer code arena at checkout. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. So somewhere along the way, it was decided that pointing and tapping things into our phone was kind of inefficient. In the ongoing quest of making technology act and respond in more human-like ways, we've seen a big trend with apps and interfaces that rely on us using our spoken voice instead. Voice entry and voice actions, they're, they're finding their way into an increasing number of apps all over the place, but... I guess that the category that benefits most from this right now is the category of digital assistants. These are apps that listen to what we're asking for and provide answers and context to match those requests. Solid speech to text is required to do this efficiently. And thankfully, that nut has been cracked pretty well at this point. Then it becomes a matter of whether the app is offering the right kind of data at the right time. And not only do some of these apps act on your voice commands. Some also offer expanded info that can be helpful to you, aiming to kind of get you the information that works for you before you even know that you need it. That's what today's episode is all about. But before we get to the apps in today's show, I should start with a bit of a warning. I'm going to be saying some commands in this episode, and that might actually set off your phone or tablet in interesting ways, let's say. This is, after all, an episode dedicated to voice assistants, and most of them have one big thing in common, a wake-up voice command. So, apologies in advance. Maybe you should hide your phone under a pillow uh, while you watch this or something along that, just to be safe. All right, with that said, let's take a look at three of the top voice assistants for Android in this week's Best of the Best. In May of this year, Microsoft announced that it would bring its own virtual assistant to iOS and Android. And this week, Microsoft delivered on that promise. Cortana is what Microsoft offers on its own Windows 10, Windows 10 Mobile, and Windows Phone platforms. And now, if you're willing to become a beta tester, you can try out Cortana on your Android device with an official non-beta release coming soon. Being that Cortana is Windows first, Android second, you don't get everything that Windows users are accustomed to, partly because the app doesn't get the same system level access that Microsoft grants it on its own operating system. So instead of saying, hey Cortana, Android users have to launch it manually. On my Lollipop Nexus 5, I can assign it to the swipe up from the home button action that's normally set for Google Now for quick access. Now when I fire up the app, Cortana asks if there's something she can help me with. The app is now waiting for my voice command so she can deliver that to the cloud and process my request. What's the weather like tomorrow? The forecast for tomorrow shows sun with a high of 82 and a low of 60. What does my schedule look like for tomorrow? You have 23 events for tomorrow. Show me Italian restaurants in Petaluma. Here are 10 Italian restaurants near you. Text Leo Laporte. I also quite like Cortana's text-to-speech engine that gives it a little bit of a personality. Sing me a song. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam, where the deer and the antelope play. 
Cortana also attempts to get to know you and your schedule, your interests, and basically your whole life. So it can offer up suggestions that apply to you before you know you need it. Cortana's home screen is very similar to Google Now in that respect, offering cards of information to remind and inform you of that data that Cortana deems important for you. Those cards can be dismissed by tapping these dots up here in the corner, followed by hide this card. These cards are pulled in from the notebook section, a thorough customization hub where you can dial in what kinds of information matter most to you and from where that information can be pulled. And if you've set any reminders for yourself, you can also access those here in the reminders section. I'm cutting Microsoft a little bit of slack because this is in fact a beta release at the moment. I encountered a few freeze ups here and there that required a reset of the app, but overall, it's nice to see some true competition in the voice assistant category. The beta is limited by compatibility and regional restrictions, so you might have to wait for the official release to take it for a spin yourself. Head on over to blogs.windows.com to find the direct link to the beta file uh, if you qualify, and you can try out Cortana in its beta form. Have you ever heard a song playing on the radio or in a store that you really liked and you wanted to identify? If you used an app to identify that song, it's very possible you used an app called SoundHound, one of the more popular apps of this type. The developers have branched out and created a voice assistant of their own called Hound. The interface is bright and bubbly with a big fat microphone down at the bottom. I'm given a huge list of commands here that I can use to kick everything off officially. I can also opt to simply say, okay, hound, and that'll wake it up. And if you plan on replacing the swipe up function on your phone, normally it's set to Google Now, with Hound, you'll want to make sure that listen on start is checked in Hound's settings so that it fires it off right when you do that. Hound aims to check the boxes that users require when it comes to voice assistance. What's the current temperature in Boise, Idaho? In Boise, Idaho, it is 74 degrees. Set an alarm for 6 a.m. tomorrow. Setting the alarm for 6 a.m. How do I say, where is the shoe store in Spanish? ¿Dónde está la tienda de zapatos? And if you want to identify that song, Soundhound style, you can say, identify this song. Sounds like paranoid Android. Hound also has a special ability to deconstruct longer, more complex voice queries, complete with context awareness in follow-up questions. For example, show me hotels in Petaluma for the first weekend in October that cost less than $250 and are pet friendly. Showing 10 results with availability near Petaluma for Thursday, October 1st for maximum of $250 US dollars per night that are pet friendly. Show only the ones with at least three stars and are within 10 miles from here. Okay, showing four results with more than three stars within 10 miles. That's super impressive stuff, though some basic commands do fall short. For example, what's my schedule like for tomorrow? This feature is not yet supported, but is coming soon. But when a voice assistant can correctly parse a complex query, like what is the population of the capital of the country in which the Appalachian Mountains is located? The population of Washington, D.C. is 601,723. Well, need I say more? Hound is available in its current beta form for free in the Play Store. Now, without a doubt, one of the biggest, most headline-grabbing features of Android lies within Google's powerhouse feature set called Google Now. It's kind of unfair showcasing Google Now on this show because it's so embedded into the fabric of modern-day Android, but what voice assistant episode would be complete without a look at Google Now and what makes it so great? First, as with most digital assistants, one needs to ask themselves if the convenience is worth the intrusion. In other words, Google has its tentacles in all of your data in order for Google Now to do some of the super cool stuff it's doing. So one should feel comfortable with that level of intrusion as a trade-off for the convenience. For example, Google Now is constantly monitoring your Gmail inbox for things like package deliveries, potential calendar events, either pre-existing or even inferred by the contents of emails. When you do a Google search, Google Now retains that and will surface news links directly related to that as they arise. A one-off search that I did for Justin Bieber resulted in a continuous stream of related news before I finally removed him manually in the settings. <sighs> 
You'll get updates on TV shows, bill payment reminders, these awesome cards telling of the time it takes to commute to work or home, weather, birthdays. Honestly, Google Now has gotten wicked smart over the years, and its voice commands are super handy as Google gives now unprecedented access to the underpinnings of Android. Okay, Google, turn off Wi-Fi. Okay, Google, launch Facebook. Okay, Google, play the Beatles. All right. Okay, Google, remind me tomorrow to take a nap at 3 o'clock. Yeah, right. That's not going to happen. Another cool newish feature is that developers can build Google Now search capability into their apps. Okay, Google, search Netflix for Mad Men. Opening app. And Google Now is about to get even better once Android 6.0 Marshmallow launches officially in the next few months. Now on tap will bring Google Now's contextual smarts to any app you're using by taking a snapshot of the screen, churning the data it sees, and providing related information. Google Now provides so much more than I've covered here. For any Android user, it's definitely the solution that's closest to Google's grand vision. No need to find it in the Play Store. Google Now is likely already installed on your device. Now, it's kind of unfair to pit anything up against arguably one of Google's best-known Android features. But as you've seen, the competition does a pretty darn good job at covering the bases and kind of differentiating themselves. So... Let's think this through. Cortana, it's a solid choice, particularly if you happen to be a regular Windows user, uh, be a desktop or let's say you have a Surface tablet, whatever the device is, Cortana for Android is probably most useful in this regard because it bridges the data gap between your other Windows devices, syncing all that information across. Cortana on its own is useful, don't get me wrong, but you'll probably get the best benefit uh, if you actually live your tech life inside the Windows world normally. Hound, as you saw, is incredibly impressive when it comes to parsing long, complicated queries. The trick here, of course, is having a clear understanding of that query before you open your mouth. I know for myself, I almost have to have that kind of thing written out in order to speak it out loud, and that kind of defeats the purpose, but Hound is just super impressive in that regard. It's also very good at allowing you to tack on to previous queries in a contextual way so you can stack com uh, commands that extend beyond that previous uh, command. Got to say, Hound really impressed me here. I really had a lot of fun playing with it. And finally, the heavyweight champion of the category, at least for Android, is Google Now. It's an app and service I literally use every single day. And that's because along with the voice commands that I throw at it, it's churning on my data behind the scenes to offer up helpful suggestions and information that's usable to me. Things like leave now to go to to get to work on time. Uh, and that's based on my history of travel on Wednesday mornings and not necessarily something that I have in my schedule. Super cool. And so close to Google's heart that you know it's only going to continue to brew over time. So it's unfair to pick a winner here because it's not, you know, it's nearly impossible to not pick Google now because of its close ties to Android. But I will say that the race is much closer than I expected it to be when I started out this episode. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode. And that is SmartThings. SmartThings made it easier than ever to turn your home into a smart home. If you've dabbled with home automation in the past, you know it used to be super expensive to get started. And most companies use proprietary systems, each with its own user experience, its own way of getting it all to talk to each other. SmartThings changes all that. The SmartThings hub controls lights, controls locks, security, everything through a simple iOS, Android, or Windows Phone app. And because it's an open platform, SmartThings works just as well with its own sensors as it does with connected devices from names you've heard of, Dropcam, Schlage Locks, Honeywell Thermostats. I mean, there's hundreds of these devices that work with SmartThings. SmartThings is so revolutionary, in fact, that it won the CES 2015 Editor's Choice Award. Pretty impressive. We're getting new windows at our house, actually, and I would love to put some of these SmartThings sensors on the windows so that when they're open, when they're closed, I know we can keep our house secure. Right now, SmartThings is offering Android App Arena listeners 10% off any featured SmartThings kit. All you have to do is go to smartthings.com slash arena and use the offer code arena. It's the perfect way to get started with a smart home. For 10% off and free domestic shipping, 
go to smartthings.com slash arena and use the offer code arena. That's smartthings.com slash arena. And we thank Smart Things for sponsoring this episode of Android App Arena. All right, up next, an app that received an update last week that actually beats Google to the punch on something. Let's take a look. Microsoft is at it again, beating Google to the punch and on its own platform, no less. What do I mean? Well, Microsoft released an update to Bing Search a few days ago that proves that it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Google Now's upcoming Now on Tap feature. They call it Snapshots. But before we get into that bit of functionality, let's take a look at the other parts of Bing Search. Now, I know there are Bing users out there, and if you fall into that category, you'll be happy with the attention to detail that Microsoft brought to its app. Of course, you can register a search query, as you would expect, or just stare at Bing's excellent image of the day, something that Bing is actually known for at this point. Slide out the side tray and jump to Bing Weather for your five-day forecast. There's the built-in browser if you prefer a little Microsoft in your Android browsing experience. If you're a Bing Rewards member in the U.S., you can actually be awarded gift cards for using Bing Search. They're pulling out all the stops. And all the other Bing services here, like images, there's a nice trends section, all the latest news, Bing Maps, and a few other things. And then there was Snapshot the Now on Tap competitor. You can either assign your Google Now swipe up action to Bing search, or you can drag out this floating bubble from the side, and Bing will then scan whatever you have on your screen at that moment and pop up a window on top with a quick search bar at the minimum, or if it has enough screen data to pull from, you'll be presented with links that tie into that content, like, like finding a movie trailer for an upcoming film. It's all presented in a floating window that can be dismissed at any time, returning you to the app you are using. I suppose we wait and see how now on tap fares, but this is a great start, I think. Find Bing Search now in the Play Store for free. Yes, I realized that was a trailer for a movie from a couple of years ago, not the upcoming uh, Superman uh, movie. But anyways, uh, finally, a follow-up to last week's episode because, hey, I heard from quite a lot of people saying that I wasn't playing Fallout Shelter properly. So here's the deal. Fallout Shelter falls into the Sims style category. Basically, you play it for a while, like I did. Then you log out. You check back another time, something that I didn't really do. I sat there for like two and a half hours playing it. It's not really how you're supposed to play it. You check back later. If you do that, hey, what do you know? Stuff actually happens when you return. Babies are born. People are standing outside waiting to get into the shelter. Level ups occur. And even better, you haven't sat there staring at a stalled game for 15 hours waiting for it to all happen before your eyes. In revisiting Fallout Shelter throughout the week, I've built a very thriving shelter, I must say. I can claim victory, at least in the sense that I understand why so many people are hooked on it. You just have to kind of have the patience to make it a rewarding gameplay experience. So check it out for yourself. Uh, send me your favorite apps, your favorite games, categories, all that kind of stuff to arena at twit.tv. You can always post those to the subreddit. That's androidapparena.reddit.com. And you can share them with me and the rest of the world by doing that. The show records live every Wednesday around 4.30 p.m. Pacific following Tech News Tonight. That's at twit.tv slash live. If you can't make the live taping, the show will appear later in the evening in the feeds and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I'll see you next week in the arena. Bye.